So I wrote an article a couple weeks ago called Empaths Forgot Their Power and within, I think it was within three hours, over 4,000 people had shared it on Facebook. Um, the, the article, again, in our kind of small community went, went viral and I got so much response from it. Mainly empaths saying, there's not a lot of people talking about this. And it's occurred to me how <clears throat> much of the much of the dialogue and conversation going on about empaths are defensive strategies, how to take care of yourself, how to shield yourself. Um, and I've talked about this so much, but we don't often talk about the, the shadow sides of empathic abilities, how empaths can glorify really unhealthy relationships with people, often feel like it's their job and responsibility to to help people to fix the world, and yet they can't even function and, fi and fix themselves. They can't even, um, they don't even have good boundaries with people. They end up being blood dolls for other people to drink. And then they feel like a victim and feel like, oh, well, it's just because I'm an empath and they blame their, they blame their unhealthy relationships on the fact that they're an empath as if they, ha they can't help it. Now, um, as an empath myself, I've, I've been through all of this. I've, I've had codependent relationships and um, dated narcissists and all the classic things that empaths do. And um, it's been through not only just years of therapy, but of a lot of self-exploration and having to really just stand in my power and remember who I am and, and also train myself to understand that my empathic abilities do not make me weak, do not make me a victim, and is they are definitely not an excuse to have unhealthy relationships and and glorify them as if um as if well you know i'm this person's best friend i think a lot of times in past especially if we have um if we have abuse in our past or if we if we just come from a a, a childhood where we didn't we did not often feel loved or appreciated for our sensitivities we often will as adults um, get our sense of worth from our relationships and the fact that we can be you know a really good listener we could be a good friend we can be someone's everything and that feels good to us because we've for so long not felt like we have much worth and again this is not true for everybody across the board but I know it's true for many empaths I've mentored a lot of empaths and um, been working with empaths now for over three years and I've seen a very consistent pattern and most of it is how do we know how to deal with our emotions? How do we know when things are ours and not ours? And how do we have healthy relationships with people? And um, and again, most of the stuff, if you read, if you go to, if you just Google empaths online, a huge amount of what's out there is defensive strategies. And I feel like even though they, a lot of people use the word it's empowering empaths, probably because of the alliteration, it sounds good. Um, they don't really have much to say about actually empowering an empath. It's just defensive strategies. And although there are, there are some really good articles about there about um, dating narcissists and the connection between empathy and weight gain, it's more of sort of this is the issue, but what do we actually do about it? How do we actually stand in our power? How do we actually begin to understand that that it's not a weakness to be an empath? And how do we heal our unhealthy dynamics? And it really does start with healing. It's really important to go in and do emotional healing. And the, one of the biggest problems that empaths have is they feel like because they're sensitive, because they have this gift, that it's their job to go out there and save the world and they neglect themselves entirely. And then have the and then just feel drained all the time, feel drained and and also in a weird way get off, get sort of a fix off of being a blood doll. Blood dolls get their own it's their own drug as well. It feels good to be drank, it feels good to have your energy drank because it makes you feel good about who you are. Then you're left drained and empty, and then you feel resentment, and then you find someone else to drink you for a while. Like you you build yourself up a bit and then find someone else to drink you because you need someone else to tell you. We need someone else to tell us how amazing we are and use superlatives with us. So in uh, I'm gonna post um I'm going to post a link to that article that I wrote on Impasse Forgot Their Power. And I actually think that's what, you know, I'm, I am in the process of, of writing a book about all of my experiences and sort of working with empaths and how I've um, kind of come into a sense of empowerment and all the things I'm still learning. I'm still learning all the time. But one thing that I do know is that we don't have to walk around and shield ourselves. I don't actually think shielding works. 
it's a good technique to have um, initially when you're first learning that you are what you are. It kind of helps to if you focus on a white light around you or focus on something. It kind of puts your it puts your focus on instead of on other people drinking you. It puts your focus on the white light, and that can raise your vibration. So in that sense, it can work. But the the philosophy behind it that you are vulnerable and weak and you need protection. I've said this over and over is that that is not a good message to give an empath. We need to we need to understand that we're strong. We need to understand that we can walk in a crowd and we don't have to be we don't have to feel drained. We need to learn <clears throat> we need to be able to step into our power and know that we can actually um, use our sensitivities to have and experience a really beautiful life. You don't always just have to experience the lows. And I think well, the reason why many empaths always experience the lows is because they have unhealed wounds and they they vibrate, their, their basic dominant vibration is low because they've never healed. And so they're going to, they're like attracts like, that's the basic physics of this universe. If you are unhealed and you have deep emotional wounds, your shadow side is going to be what attracts your dominant vibration in your life. It's going to be what attracts your relationships. It's going to be what you experience. It's just like putting lenses on. If you feel like you're weak and if you feel like you're vulnerable, then you're going to walk, when you walk out into a crowded place, you're going to see everything through that lens. But that doesn't mean that that's the actual reality, and it definitely doesn't have to be the reality. And one of the things that is um, that I like to point to, when I was interviewing Till Swan, she talked about Jesus and how he was the ultimate empath. And if you look at his power, whether you're Christian or not, I don't, I'm not, I don't associate with any sort of religion, but one thing about Jesus is he was powerful. And he was sensitive, and he was definitely an empath. He moved from the heart, but he didn't he didn't shy away from negative energies. He didn't go around with a shield and have to protect himself. He was powerful. He was not afraid to walk out and be powerful. And that sort of power healed him because he could see when he looked at someone, his he saw their perfection. He he was able to look at them through his sensitivities, through the highest vibration there is, and and see them as healed or see them as restored. And that's one thing I believe that empathic energy does is it's restorative in nature. The whole reason you feel we have the gift of feeling, and again, every human being has can, can feel and have empathy unless you're a sociopath. But the whole reason we have empathy for other people is so A, that we remember we're not alone and we're not separate. Anything I do to someone else, I'm doing to me. Any way I look at the world, I'm, I'm actually I'm looking at it as a reflection of me. There's not a, a separate truth out there that's separate from who you are. And that's one thing that Christ understood well. And he was fierce. Is not Mr. Rogers with a beard, like how some of the um, art and religious people like to portray him. If you actually read what he did and said, he was powerful, he was strong, he was fierce, and he dared to love, deeply, deeply love, to cry, to weep. It wasn't this, oh, I'm always happy thing, but he was he was powerful. And that's just one example of a powerful, empowered empath. But I think it's one of the best ones we have, and I think a lot of Christians miss that. I think a lot of um, a lot of people in general miss that gift that he had. And um, so I just wanted to to say that there is a place of power and we can step into it and you don't have to be this weak um, uh, little lamb that is a, that goes out and you're a victim. That is not how you have to live your life. And one of the things, I talk about this a lot in our um, empath group. I have a Facebook group for those of you who aren't, aren't involved. There's an um, empowering empaths group. Facebook group online, but I am starting, I'm doing a new class and it's called, um, how to thrive, how to heal and thrive as an empath. And, um, it's a three part series class. It is going to be online and it is, um, it is going to be pre-recorded. So those who register for it, it'll always be available. You'll just get a link. It's going to be out August 1st. You'll just get a link to the class and, um, and it, it's to a password protected page and you can access all the content there. But I'm also going to be opening a private group for, um, for everyone who pre-registers for the class. And it's just going to be a mentoring group because my, the bigger group that I have, there's over 800 people in it and not ever, maybe about 10, 10 to 15 people who are actually really active and posting. And I think a lot of people feel intimidated to, 
to share personal stuff because it, there's so many people in that group and not everyone's actually active, so it feels a little intimidating. But um, for everyone who pre-registers for the, the, the new class, how to be an empowered empath, um, I'm going to have a, a private mentoring group. So everyone who pre-registers, I'm capping it at 40 people, and I'm pretty close to 40. I think I think there's like 10 spots left for for, for pre-registration um, to be in the mentoring group. But basically, I'm going to do two months of of free mentoring for anyone who who signs up for that class, and then after that, I'm going to keep it open and do it for like $11 a month. But it's going to be more more intimate. I'm going to be regularly posting videos, regularly interacting with each other. But I don't want it to be a community where we feed off each other or we all talk about how how weak and vulnerable we are and how do we protect ourselves. I want it to be a community where we empower each other, where we do not see each other through weaknesses but through strengths, and where we remind each other. It's a constant reminder of you are powerful. You you and you can stand up. It's okay to have boundaries with people. It's okay to have even anger. Again, look at when the Bible, when Jesus got angry. And the interesting thing about Jesus, whenever he got angry, you never see him getting angry at a pagan. You never even see, there's there's no, there's no nothing in the Bible of him even talking to pagans or to that wor- the, the world out there. It's religious people that he gets furious with because they veil the heart and they fancy and, li- they fancy and sort of idolize the mind. And it's really fascinating to look at it that way. But, but anyway, I, I this the idea for this group is that we connect, and we um, empower each other. And I'll be sharing a lot more deeply with my experiences and and my techniques. And I want it to be a a place where we all kind of can help each other, but really. Um, come from a place of we're not gonna this is not a group where we feed off each other this is not a group where we all talk about how hard our lives are where we can share that things are difficult and we can share this you know we can share our struggles but always with the backdrop of we are the ones empowered it we're not giving our power away to the world we're not saying the world is more powerful than us and we're not saying that other people are more power that powerful than us we're actually going to empower each other and, rem- and take our power back and remember who we are And also really explore deeper what it means to be an empowered empath and look at people, not just Jesus, but other figures that um, are powerful empaths. So, and that have commanding presences. So that's sort of what's going on right now. If you want, I just wanted to tell the YouTube world that I'm doing this. Um, I know I haven't been posting regular videos. I'm having an issue with my um, camera. So I, I will be actually posting normal videos soon and not just audios, but I wanted to get this information out there. So if you want to sign up for the class, check out the link in the description box below this video or go to chakracenter.org and you'll find my classes there. This one is called um, How to be empowered and thrive as an empath. So I have several classes on my website, so this this is the one to check out. It's $33, and like I said, everyone who pre-registers, so any anytime before August 1st, as long as you're, I think there's 10 spots left, you get two months of mentoring in a private group. Um, so, and after that, you can sign up for mentoring if you want. And I think that's all I have to say, but I hope you guys are doing well, and um, I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.